Climate Now, in collaboration with Copernicus. Hello and welcome to Climate Now, our unique monthly update on what's really happening to our planet. In this special episode, we're looking beyond the COP26 summit to the climate risks and realities for Europeans in the decade to come. People are realising that climate change is affecting us here and now. It's not just a problem for our children and our grandchildren, it's affecting us today. To begin, let's check the latest temperature data from the Copernicus Climate Change Service. October 2021 was 0.4 degrees Celsius above the 1991 to 2020 average, making it the third warmest October on record. If we have a look at the map of temperature anomaly, we can see that Europe was divided between northwest and southeast. Norway was actually 1.9 degrees Celsius above average, while from Greece across to the Caspian Sea, temperatures were well below average for the time of year. But the most striking thing was what happened in northern Canada, where temperatures in some places were 7 degrees above average, meaning that areas that would normally be frozen at this time of year were actually above zero degrees for the first time in October, according to the records that we have. And that's a new symptom of the rapid warming that we've seen in the Arctic in recent years. In the wake of the COP26 climate summit, we wanted to give you some insights into the changes ahead. And the first is being welcomed as a breakthrough in carbon dioxide emissions monitoring. And that's because at the moment, there is no way to accurately measure how much CO2 is pumped into the atmosphere by big industrial sites, cities, and even countries. Everything is based on indirect estimates. But a new European initiative is aiming to fix that problem. Let's take a look. Carbon dioxide is colourless, odourless and mixes instantly into the atmosphere. Tracking how much sources like this are emitting is incredibly complex. But from 2026, a new European system called CO2MVS will combine satellite scans and computer models to better define who is emitting what and when there will be a possibility to verify uh, the emissions using numerical model and compare with uh, incoming observations and uh, in a way close the, the loop uh, and make sure that what we think we emit in terms of CO2 emissions is actually what's in the atmosphere. CO2 MVS promises a resolution of two kilometers. That means countries will find out precisely where CO2 is coming from, including spotting sources that may have been underestimated, overestimated or simply invisible until now. I don't think it will revolutionize uh, our uh, knowledge of emissions over Europe, but on other parts of the world, uh, yes, maybe it will be quite a change. Although all of the talk at COP26 was of reducing emissions, the actual concentrations of CO2 in the atmosphere continue to rise, and you can see that in this graph of satellite data. There are fluctuations according to the seasons, but the level continues to go up. And we're now at an unprecedented high in human history. So what should we expect from our climate in the decade ahead? We ask some experts. We are protesting because... The first question is whether the decisions taken at Glasgow will have any effect by 2030. Our climate system is slow to react, so the simple answer is no. Over the next decade, things are going to warm up whatever happens to our emissions. But the emission reductions we're talking about here are about the long term, about what happens after 2030, up to 2050 and beyond. We already had a taste of what's to come this year. Climate change-related extremes ranged from forest fires and a near 50-degree heat wave in southern Europe to deadly flooding in Germany and Belgium. In the next decade, such weather extremes are projected to become more frequent and more intense in some regions. So by 2030, we would expect a further increase in heat waves, also a further increase in heavy precipitation, mostly in northern Europe and also in central Europe, and also an increase in intensity and frequency of droughts, in particular in southern Europe, but also in central Europe. Even with rapid emissions reductions, the effects of climate change will be felt until the end of the century and beyond. Well, that's all we have time for. You can read more about how our planet is changing on euronews.com slash climate now. And I'll see you next time. Climate Now, in collaboration with Copernicus.